following is a special presentation of ESPN College Football on ABC. The Los Angeles Coliseum, where tonight the USC Trojans and the Nebraska Cornhuskers meet for the first time in 36 years. 733 victories. Make that 796. Three Heisman Trophy winners. Seven. And count. Five national championships. How about 11? Legendary coaches. Legendary teams. It's a legacy that's tough to live up to. But that's why we play here. That's why. The Trojans. The Corn Huskers. So much more than the numbers. Much more than mere facts. Wear their uniforms and you're a symbol, signifying generations of excellence. They've each claimed long stretches of time in which they dominated the sport, redefining the way it's played, rewriting its history. For some time now, they've admired each other from afar. They get reacquainted in prime time tonight. Nebraska, USC on Saturday Night Football. Welcome you to Saturday Night Football, where Separation Saturday continues. The number 19 Nebraska Cornhuskers take on the number four USC Trojans. It's Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Good evening, everybody, and welcome along with Kirk Herbstreit and the coach, Bob Davey. I'm Brent Musburger. Pleasure to be with you. You know, USC lost just so much firepower from last year's great team but yet Kirk here they are with a great young quarterback and they just reload yeah you're right you think about losing Matt Leiner Reggie Bush Lindale White so much offensive firepower but they've just reloaded Pete Carroll does an excellent job of recruiting John David Booty is going to have a chance to show America that this USC offense is going to continue to move forward he's a very confident and capable quarterback and he's got a ton of skill around him now coach Nebraska's got to change points with them they got to go up and down the field now well Brett three years ago when Bill Callahan came from the NFL he brought the West Coast offense with him it's taken some time but they are now comfortable in the scheme the biggest reason quarterback Zach Taylor is a perfect fit for this offense I think he's the best quarterback in the Big 12 they will get a chance to prove that tonight well guys here are our two quarterbacks that you mentioned John David and Zach which one tonight will experience the thrill of it. This is ESPN on ABC. John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie out to the big game in just a moment. But there was plenty of other action on Separation Saturday. Michigan against Notre Dame. Charlie Weiss, I don't think he knew what type of team he had until today. Brady Quinn picked off three times. Well, he kept talking to his team this week about not being soft. Are you ready to play? Can you be physical? Michigan whipped Notre Dame today. N Brady Quinn and his fellas just never showed up. Five turnovers in the game. Meanwhile, Miami against Louisville. Brian Brom, of course, is the difference maker. Finds Urutia here at 10-7 to lead, but Doug, they would lose Brom later in the game. They tore a ligament in his hand and his thumb. He That's going to throw a big question mark on the future for this team the rest of the year, but it was the Louisville defense today that just dominated the game, dominated Miami's offense. Brom is going to need surgery. That Auburn LSU game came down to the end. Yeah, like two pitchers throwing a no-hitter out there, and Oklahoma really got lucky with some controversial calls on instant replay oh. down the backside. Yeah, Oregon, Oregon got a break on the onside kick and a tip ball. What are we looking for? Nebraska, can they 
beat USC? Can, Can they, they get back to where they were? They've got to put pressure on John but David Booty. The quarterback cannot run free out there for USC. No. Nebraska can't get down early. John David's got an arm. I mean, he's got weapons, USC all the way. All right. We, of course, will see you at halftime. Right now, out to Chris Fowler. Well, John, thank you. All right, got to wait till Traveler gets here now. Maybe just a little bit of that Showtime sizzle is missing. Some of the glamour gone. The star power has to be replaced. Careers of Leinert and Bush being honored here in the end zone. The trademark jerseys in the Coliseum. How their replacements will perform. Booty and the other guys. Well, that's a source of real excitement and uncertainty. But this is SC. And the expectations certainly are very high beginning in their first home game. For his brand of wisdom, we go to my pal Lee Corso in the opposite tunnel. Lee? Yeah, you know, Chris, uh, Oh, Herb Street's always talking about how he likes to talk to the coaches on his cell phone. Well, I decided to take it one level further. I come down here to get it directly from the horse's mouth. I'm going to talk to Traveler and Tommy Trojan and find out what they think in this ball game. Because I tell you one thing, this Traveler is a good-looking horse, and as soon as he comes over here, I'm going to interview him about the game. I tell you what. This is going to be one of the best games of the year because Nebraska is going to be ready. And old Tommy Tra Trojan took the Traveler away from me. He's going to kill the whole stick. Where's the Traveler? It's a wrong place. But that's it. Yeah, show Traveler, are we going to talk to him? And I'm telling you, I asked him before, Traveler, what do you think? He said, let me tell you something, Coach. We look real good on defense. Then I said, Brent, I tell you what, I like this USC team. I like them a lot. I like Traveler, Tommy Trojan, and I'm going with these guys. See you later. Ahead. The USC Trojans pour onto the field here in the Los Angeles Coliseum. The last time they lost a game here, September 29th, 2001. That is 27 home games ago under Pete Carroll, who has not lost a home game since his first season. It'll be the Trojans and the Cornhuskers when we come back to Los Angeles. This ESPN production is available on ABC HD, presented by Dish Network. USC Nebraska but there is a sidebar because yesterday Yahoo Sports and internet website broke a story which may have major implications for the USC football program the story alleges that Heisman Trophy winner Reggie Bush and his family received illegal benefits worth more than hundred thousand dollars from agents who were competing to represent Bush when he turned professional an NCAA bylaw states an athlete is ineligible if he or she accepts benefits from agents or marketing representatives. Lisa Salters has more on the breaking story. Well, Brent, after the New Orleans Saints practice yesterday, Reggie Bush insisted again that he didn't do anything wrong while at USC. But let's face it, he's not in college anymore, so there's not really much that the NCAA can do to Reggie Bush. What investigators are looking into now is what exactly happened and when USC knew about it and how much did they know. Now, in what basically amounted to a no comment, the university released this statement yesterday saying, quote, USC cannot comment on any matter that is the subject of an ongoing NCAA and Pac-10 investigation. Investigation. USC continues to cooperate fully with the investigation. Now, I spoke to Pete Carroll just before game time, and he said he told his players, look, I know a lot is being said, a lot is going on right now. Just ignore it. It doesn't have anything to do with you. But, Brent, let's remember, if any of this is proven true, it could have a lot to do with this team later, particularly if sanctions are handed down. Brent? And Lisa, as we say in this business, stay tuned. USC and Pete Carroll won the toss. They have deferred. So Nebraska will begin on offense behind Bill Callahan. Three years ago brought the West Coast offense after coaching the Oakland Raiders leading them to a Super Bowl where he was beaten by Tampa Bay and then finishing his NFL career with the Raiders after his second season and moving on to Nebraska. We have about 15 to 20,000 Nebraska fans in the stands. Troy Van Blockham will kick it off. Blockham nailed nine of his ten kickoffs at the opener against Arkansas into the end zone. He has a whale of a leg. Last year, 110 kickoffs and 31 touchbacks. Can he get one to start this? You bet. 
coming out of the 20 yard line and uh, Coach David here comes Zach Taylor the senior who once was at Wake Forest then went to a JC and now operates the controls of this West Coast offense. Well, Brent Zach Taylor started last year his first year in the program. He got beat up. He got sacked 38 times. But within that 38 sacks he earned the respect of his teammates and the coaches. Now he has total control of this offense. If they give Zach Taylor time coach he has the ability and the skill around him to come after a banged up USC secondary but they've got to give him time. On first down the runner from North Hollywood Marlon Lucky and tripped up by the right side. Now the city Nebraska offense and we have talked about Zach Taylor and we have mentioned Lucky. It should be pointed out that USC got in a little bit late but they did recruit him but the youngster been very happy when he signed on with the Cornhuskers Lincoln Nebraska. The offensive line has been a work in progress the last two years learning how to pass block rather than simply plow straight ahead for the option offense. Here's Lucky again and this time a gaping hole puts him in third and short. The USC defense and folks there are some injuries we want to talk about here. A freshman Taylor Mays two freshmen replaces Josh Pinker who's out for the year at free safety. The strength here overall is the linebackers Cedric Ellis is out had his knee scoped. They'll miss him on the nose. Feely Moala in there. Brandon Jackson is now the running back. A single back third and two for the Huskers. Now they empty. Firing incomplete. Nebraska forced to punt on its first series. Important series there for USC because when you're a big underdog against a team that is as talented as USC and has such a great track record where they needed to try to pick up some confidence to get themselves to believe that they can play with the Trojans. Desmond Reed of the running backs here at USC is back deep to field Dan Titchener's punt. Punter from Cheyenne, Wyoming. And it hit a Nebraska player's foot and I don't think it was but hold on because it, it perhaps I saw it incorrectly I don't think it hit a Trojan foot but there was definitely contact with the ball and Nebraska is claiming that yes it did. No it did not. And let's let's take a look here just to make sure. Boy, very very close here. But boy. But. That, really is close. It is very close. Corner Kerry Harris back there trying to pick up a block. Here comes the Trojan offense. Hi I'm Matt Leiner. I would like to introduce you to the newest starting quarterback at USC. The man John David Booty. So there is number 10 but he's going to have to wait before taking his first snap tonight because the replay booth buzzed down and we want to get a second look at that because uh, Kirk I thought uh, you may have had something here. Take a close look. Well it's close. The, the look there looks like Harris number seven from USC may have touched it but in fact it did touch. Well it's very close. And again it was. I think he hit the Nebraska player first. Well, it's ruled USC's ball. It has to be indisputable video evidence. That hit the Nebraska player first. And look at me at that angle right there. I do not think they'll overturn this. Bounced, it bounced and then hit Ragone. The ruling on the field of an illegal touch by the kicking team is confirmed. First down. A Pac-10 crew working here, and when they meet next year in Lincoln, it will be a Big 12 crew. Now, sometimes, uh, you take your crew with you when you go on the road but not in this home and home. You mentioned John David Booty's going to have to wait as we look for the replay. John David Booty's had to wait four <laughs> years to have his opportunity to become the starting quarterback at USC. He had a great start at Arkansas on the road. First time as a starting quarterback in the Coliseum. This is his team and his offense. Now they're using Emmanuel Moody the freshman running back for this special opening play. Play fake roll hard to the right throw in underneath. And they complete it. 
to Chris McFoy, the senior wideout. In our city offensive line, and you will see tonight one of the fine wide receivers in the country, Wayne Jarrett, a junior in what you would figure would be his last season here. He has NFL written all over. He's coming off a subpar week for him, caught only seven balls, but only 35 yards against Arkansas. So the coach is trying to fire him up a little bit this week. And now Washington, the veteran, is in at running back. And on his first two plays, there is Jarrett down the near side, number eight. So quickly, the rangy one is into the offense. Steve Sarkeesian, one of the things he wants to do in this game is he wants to spread Nebraska's defense out and make them defend in space. Utilize the great athletic ability and speed of USC's offense in the first two plays. A lot of movement and just getting them outside. And when, Coach, you know when you spread a defense to the outside, next thing you know, you try to go vertically because they're so concerned at getting to the boundaries. Chauncey Washington stays in at running back. C.J. Gable was coming in, and you can see the bunch of wideouts to the right as John David is putting it up. Over the top, incomplete, trying to hit the running back who had to circle out. And our Nebraska defense, strong up front, but after that, there's big question marks, especially Andre Jones and the corners who are under fire here early. Jones has to walk the walk tonight because earlier he guaranteed a win against the Trojans. So Andre Jones, his first year, number 25. Now C.J. Gable is in at running back. Second and 10 for John David and the Trojans. And here's the freshman, another one of the just very talented freshmen. Brent, let's get back to that point you made about Andre Jones. Andre Jones played in junior college last year. Not much media attention when you play in junior college. He came out. Here's the quote. We'll let the people at home read it. I don't think it was all that uh, critical, but SC definitely tried to use it. I think it helps that he did it early in the week. SU SC's had a lot of other issues since that was a, a key issue early in the week. Gave those of us in the media something to <laughs> shoot. <Of course>. <laughs> Give them game day, fellas. Ahead. There's the <laughs> head up, and uh, they use Ryan Powdrell and ball down. Powdrell grabbing the back of his right leg, ball down on the play. He was a force against Arkansas. One time linebacker, he had played a little fullback in high school when he was recruited. And Brent, you said it. He was a force against Arkansas. Six foot, 255 pounds. Oh, been underneath the defensive player is what it looked like there. And uh, a concerned Coach Carroll comes out. It looked just a touch ugly there when it went down, didn't it? Let's uh, take a break. We'll sort out the injury to young Powdrell. Just underway for the Los Angeles Coliseum. This is such a sad way for, for a, a senior, senior running, back's running back's career, career to end here with USC. He's out of Mission Viejo High School. Uh, went to a junior college as you watch again. We will give you one look at it. And uh, obviously it's a major leg injury. You can see how crooked the leg is as he holds it and uh, and not good. You, they brought the uh, that soft cast out immediately and uh, they will take him out on a cart and uh, Ryan Powdreau. We can just do nothing but all of us wish him nothing but the best. And uh, well they tend to Powdreau let us go to New York and one of our update fellows Matt Weiner is there. Matt what have you got for us. Update on Bowden Bowl 8. Remember, Tommy has beaten Bobby two of the last three years, and Clemson gets the early edge. James Davis with the touchdown, but the extra point attempt is blocked, scooped up by Tony Carter, who's headed the other way for two points. 
It's worth two for the Knolls, so we have a 6-2 game at the moment in Tallahassee. Thank you, Matt, and an ovation for a young Powdrell here from the from the crowd. And this this will grow as they wheel him off the field here, the student body across the way. And, and the Nebraska fans in their red shirts who have always been amongst the best fans in all of college football are up joining the folks here from Southern California. See the concern on the faces over there of the USC players and Brent Ryan Paldrell jumped out at us watching the Arkansas sure tape jumped out us out at us in practice 81 total yards against Arkansas four catches and he was a linebacker in the spring that they moved over to running back. Kirk, you know the investment these players make to play in these games. You just hate to see that. Back on the field, we have a fourth down. Remember, that was a third down. They did not get to the marker. So this will be a fourth down and short without their short yardage fullback. Chauncey Washington, the junior from Torrance, is the running back. Motion Smith. On David booting right, a little bit short of that first down marker. It'll depend on that spot, and he did not get it. He did not get it. Ball goes over. Steve Smith was not beyond the line. Brent, did it? <laughs> that is a huge stop if they come up short by Nebraska's defense, and Barry Cryer got the pressure by getting in there, forcing Booty to deliver the football early. This could be a big stop for Nebraska. Yeah, because Kirk, they had driven down yeah. inside the 30-yard line. Yep. And especially early in this game, so important on the road for this Nebraska team, and they need to get some confidence established. You're going to see the pressure by Barry Cryer right up the middle right there. And Steve Smith, who came across in motion, obviously short of that yellow line. Big stop for the Cornhuskers. When we come back, it'll be Zach Taylor and the Cornhusker passing offense. 90,000 plus in the Coliseum. Somewhere an NFL executive is drooling as he looks down at this scene. This is the number one football team in Southern California. An aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear Tires featuring Silent Armor technology. 74 degrees. We'll watch the sunset another hour and a half off to the west of us. Kenny Wilson, he has ability. JC running back in, gets the handoff, looks for daylight. Strong first down. Bob, are you surprised that Coach Callahan is trying to establish the run here early and not opening it up. Brent, I think they have to. You look back to last season, Nebraska ended up 107th out of 117 teams in rushing offense. They had to throw the football too much last year. They have to make a commitment, Brent, to see if they can run this football against USC. Lucky back in at running back. Terrence Nunn, Matt Perry, and Nate Swift. Those would be his best weapons on the outside and here is lucky and absolutely no hole that was simply jammed up by the middle and uh, Lisa what's the what's the early report on the young running back well Brent I just talked to uh, the USC officials and they told me that they believe that Ryan Paldrew dislocated his ankle now right now they're taking him up to the locker room I asked them is he going to the hospital is he getting x-rays they say right now they're just going to look at him in the locker room now I asked Ryan as he was being carted off I said are you okay big man he said I'm all right but he had that look of shock in his eye and it, and it was a gruesome injury Brent. yes it was third down and eight throw in underneath now to Brandon Jackson and he's short of the first down marker so here early 
USC and Nebraska and the two defenses have come up with big plays. That was Lawrence Jackson, their number one defensive end, number 96. And Brent, you see the speed of this USC defense. Lawrence Jackson right there, the defensive end, making the play on the screen. Here's Titchener to punt again. And Desmond Reed standing back deep. The fake got it in midfield to the 35 yard line. Big Red loves that as Todd Peterson makes the catch. Yeah, what I like here is Titchener actually bobbles the ball, almost making it look like he loses control of it. And maybe he did, but I know this is a design play, and Peterson gets downfield. It's one of their better receivers, makes a nice catch. What a throw by the punter. And if you're going to come into this stadium and upset a team like USC, you need a play like that early in this football gutsy, game. Gutsy call by Bill Callahan early in the game. 28 yards on the play. First down. Pounding lucky. In the middle of that Trojan defense, you will notice that number 58, Ray Mawaluga, his first start, he's a sophomore right there. You'll be able to pick him out with that hair. Folks, he has an unbelievable upside as a linebacker. If you go back through the years, some of the great backers who have come out of USC, take it on back from Junior Seau, as good as I ever covered in the college game. This young man, Mawaluga, has got some upside. Second down. Lucky the running back. Circles out. Zach Taylor. Bang straight ahead to the 20. Another one of our update fellows, John Saunders. John, what do you got for us on this Saturday night? Well, Brent, we've got your Sports Center 30 at 30 update. First Michigan Notre Dame. Brady Quinn intercepted by Prescott Burgess, who returns it for a touchdown. Five turnovers for Notre Dame, three interceptions for Brady Quinn. Louisville, meanwhile, against Miami. This one wound up being a blowout. Colby Smith from four yards out. They win it easily. Brent, back to you. John, I can hear him howling about Larry Coker all the way in Southern California. Yellow flags flying all over. I want to go back to that punt. I got a question for, for my two experts up here. You really think the punter's good enough to bobble it like that? It helps sell it. I, when you got a second look at it, he lost control of the ball. But I think it helped sell it. Maybe it you think him. it was a design call, Bob? You know, I don't think they practiced it that way. Back Not the bobbling London. part, but I think the play was designed. Yeah, Todd Peterson, the wide receiver, yeah. was on that punt team for sure. an obvious reason. Yeah. That's well, a heck of he's a game. Pretty good if he's <laughs> selling here. Pretty good at um, juggle. Third down and nine. Such a screen. And it is read perfectly by Mozik McCurtis. He is the corner in their nickel defense. And then Thomas moves over to the slot. We talked about USC with injuries, particularly at corner. This is a great play right there in the open field by Mozik McCurtis because there were some alignment out there. Big number 65, Greg Austin. That's a great play in the open field. Pete Carroll gets you to third down. He Will they punt again, Kirk? Will they yeah, they'll punt this time. Titchener. And downed at the six yard line by the Cornhuskers, who are off to a positive start. They have the Trojans backed up. USC has lost another player, and it is scoreless. Just north of us, downtown Los Angeles, the Staples Center. Maybe no more than 10 minutes from this campus and then right off to our right USC building a brand new basketball facility seats about 10,000 athletic director Mike Garrett was telling us it'll open this season and will that ever help the basketball program here at USC UCLA has dominated that sport as you know 
through the decades. Washington in at running back, and now Mike Brittingham will be the fullback. There was movement in the middle by the Cornhusker defender, but was he pulled off? Dog and Duro, and the nose man, was he pulled off? There he is from Inglewood, California, nearby. Before the, fl Before the flag was thrown, timeout, Southern California. <laughs> there you have it. So they use a timeout. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at Southwest.com. Chevrolet, America's brand, Chevy, an American revolution. And Michelin, a better way forward. Beautiful night in Los Brent, Angeles. Can you pick out the different color red that Nebraska fans wear from the USC red? I promise you there are some great fans around this country, but none of them find a way to get into opponent stadium like the Cornhusker fans. They find a way. You as a Notre Dame coach would know that. I'm, yeah, I'll never forget that day. They filled your stadium, coach. You looked up there and thought you were in Lincoln yeah. that time in South. They must big, save up their money now. <laughs> the Big Red Nation travels. Yes, they but do. Guys, this is an ugly start to the game, and you know who it favors? Nebraska. The uglier it can be, and the longer this game goes on where it's tied, the more Nebraska hangs in here and starts to believe that they can compete with USC. After the timeout, was called up at the line as the clock ticked down. That's Washington straight ahead. Remember on a change of possession, the clock starts on the ready. And Oklahoma probably wondering about that and that tough loss up at Oregon. How much time was squandered after that final kickoff? USC obviously loses Reggie Bush and Lindale White. Chauncey Washington, who's had an amazing career academically and eligible in 04 and 05, paid his dues here, has finally got an opportunity. You'll see a stable of backs tonight trying to replace Lindale White and Reggie Bush. From the power eye and stood up, Corey McEwen. <laughs> The junior linebacker from Naperville, Illinois, number 13, stood him up in the hole as we check in again with John Saunders. Brent with the prime time pulse over on ESPN, Clemson leading Florida State. Florida State has two points because they friend back a blocked point after. On ESPN 2, Texas blowing out Rice, 45-0. Selvin Young with 104 yards and a touchdown. Brent, back to you. Here, John, scoreless Nebraska USC, third and one. Moody into the backfield with that deep set. He's got the breakaway speed, and not this time. The black shirts are playing very well up front here at the start of this football game. Barry Cryer, 94, in on that stop. He's a 280 pound senior from Louisiana. Nebraska, a talented, active front seven. You're going to see the penetration by Big 90, Adam Carricker. And then Corey McKeon, another huge stop for Nebraska. Boyd next punt is away. Terrence Nunn, the wide receiver. There's a penalty flag. It was interfered with. He takes off anyway down that sideline. The cover man was in too close. They'll decline it. The Huskers are in business. Interference for the opportunity to catch the kick on the kicking team, number 37. That penalty is declined. First down. I think it was 47. It looked like Clay Matthews got down there a little bit early. I'll tell you what, great concentration this time. And what a turn, return. I think a lot of the, the coverage team for USC thought it was a fair catch. They stopped covering, and none. Good concentration, picks up huge yards for the Huskers. Kenny Wilson back in as the Nebraska running back. On first down, they stick with the running call. The 21 yard line and Moala. Early in this football game, 
You feel it's critical, though, for Nebraska to take advantage of this field position and get a touchdown out of this drive. Okay, Bill Callahan probably take points at this point. Obviously, a touchdown would be great. They catch a break here. They've been working the field position. Coach, as you said, now it's time to try to capitalize. Take the handoff, and it's blocked. Terrific penetration. There's Kevin Ellison. He was slowed this week in practice with that knee injury, number four. But watch him come in and deflect it. And that's the strong safety coming on the strong safety blitz right there. Pete Carroll loves to bring his secondary linebackers. And he wants to put pressure on the quarterback. Third down and eight. Incomplete. Overthrew France Hardy, number seven. That was a one-time teammate of the quarterbacks, junior college. It's amazing when you look at this USC defense. Six starters back from last year, but three of those starters hurt. You know, you always think of USC reloading on offense. They reload on defense as well. There's a lot of speed, Kirk, on that field. Jordan. M. Congdon to attempt the field goal here. It'll be a 38-yarder to put Nebraska ahead. Got it. The three touchdown underdogs from Lincoln, Nebraska, strike first in the Los Angeles Coliseum. So far, we would say that Pete Carroll's Trojans have looked out of sync. As a result, they're down by a field goal. And near the end of the game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team to honor their determination. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. One thing you mentioned USC out of sync and Kirk you know this as well as anyone when a player like a Ryan Powdrell suffers such an ugly injury that affects the psyche of a football team. And don't think for one second that a player of that caliber with the respect USC has for him going down with that kind of injury may be affecting this USC football team. And I right think now. the head coach for USC Pete Carroll is as good as there is at working the psychological factors of a football game and he'll get in to these players faces and really try to encourage them and motivate them to put that behind them but they have not had an opportunity to build any rhythm which is unusual the reason is Nebraska's strength on defense is their front four and their front seven right now first few possessions they've been able to win the battle up front because if it starts to become a game on the perimeter that's when the speed of USC has a big advantage Congdon, who nailed the field goal, will kick it off. Harris and McFoy back deep for the Trojans. On a big hop in the end zone. Got a hustle, and he's short of the 20. Kerry Harris. Well, dancing with the stars. TV's hottest sensation. The top 10 stars face off. Competition is always as fierce. Who will be the next star sent home? It all happens live. Dancing with the Stars, all new Tuesday, 8, 7 Central, only on ABC. Kirk, you said that Emmett Smith oh, was a star. He put a clinic. He was. I was waiting. I thought he might be you know, a little stiff. He's so muscular. He, you talk about quick feet. He should win. Right now, he's the, the early favorite. My kids love that show. Line up, watch it every Tuesday. You love that show. I did too. That on I love it. Yeah, you I like the show. I love the show. <laughs> There's that flanker screen. There's Jarrett. <laughs> Diving toward that first down marker. Wayne Jarrett, 6'5", 215 pounds on everybody's preseason All-American team. Anytime you throw wide receiver screens behind the line of scrimmage, you need blocks. And that's an excellent job by Chris McFoy blocking downfield. McFoy. Boom. That's a great lick, Kirk. Yep, very, very nice. And it's good to see. I and mean, that's something that receivers always get so much credit for making a big play. But, you know, Lane Kiffin and Steve Sarkeesian work hard in having them block downfield to help each other out for big plays. Jared against Andre Jones that time. McCoy, John David. Good bootleg thrower. 
on the money to Smith. Slips the tackle and is pushed out of bounds by the middle linebacker, McEwen. And Steve Smith, a three-year starter, runs great routes. But John David Booty, Brent, you mentioned an excellent job of throwing on the run. He runs a little corner route right here. Really tough to defend USC's play action passes that come on running downs, Kirk. And Andre Jones that time who talked about beating USC was turning left and turning right. He didn't know which way Steve Smith was going. Washington the running back. Fumble picked up by the Trojans. Washington saved it and made a first down out of it. The front again from Nebraska is able to get pressure. This time they bring a linebacker, Stuart Bradley, number 34. He gets in, strips the ball loose, and once the ball's on the ground, how about Chauncey Washington? Not only pouncing on the ball, showing some athletic ability, obviously, for a tailback, he picks up a first. Great story to see Chauncey. Missed a couple of years because of academics, hung in. Junior now battling a hamstring injury from the spring. Number 23. First down and 10, and the Trojans mounting their second drive of the game. John David looking to attack the corner, and it was deflected incomplete. Second down and 10. You really have to respect John David Booty staying in this program, you know, in kind of an era of instant gratification. He sits here for really four years. Yep. Can you imagine when Matt Leiner got up to that podium and said, I'm coming back for my senior year? What went through John David Booty's mind? But, Grant, we met with him yesterday. What a great young man. He is that, Bob. Just a, a pleasure to talk to him and listen to the story of the Booties from Louisiana. His brother, who played Major League Baseball and NFL football, now lives in Irvine down the road. He's here with us tonight. Short drop, putting it up again. Here's Jarrett. Jarrett very active so we have to talk about Lane Kiffin the offensive coordinator who after last week's 35 yard performance said we didn't bring him all the way from New Jersey to catch seven passes for 35 yards as you look at Lane over there closest to the wall calling the plays down. Well they challenged the All-American because he's had a quad that bothered him. They didn't think he competed against Arkansas in the opening game. He had a few catches but he didn't compete and play up to his level because teams are going to come after him and get physical. They want to see Dwayne Jarrett get right back into the face of the defenders. They didn't see that in week one. 43 yards tonight. He's already surpassed the opener and pounding in there with Emmanuel Moody. There was more to that quote. And one thing we found out about young Lane Kiffin, who just turned 31 years old, he speaks up, folks. And there is exactly what we've been talking about. It, Guys like Reggie Bush, he said, showed up every day in practice. So they were trying to light a, a fire under Dwayne Jarrett. And not only Dwayne Jarrett, but Lane Kiffin made this statement in front of all the receivers in the offense, Brent. That sends out a tremendous message when you have an offensive coordinator get up and call the star player out for a poor performance. Taking a blow. Handing off to Washington. Somewhat jokingly, but on a serious side, I said when I looked at their receivers, this is a better group of receivers than the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> and, you know, I, I, I mean that. I mean, those guys in the NFL are really experienced. I mean, but you take a look at this, Kirk, at this entire package of wide receivers recruited by USC. And, and we've got five or six guys that are going to play Sunday football. Well, Dwayne Jarrett, of course, Steve Smith, Patrick Turner, who has a chance to come on and be a valuable commodity this year. Then you start to get to that next level of receivers. Hazleton, a freshman, Osbury. But Nebraska's defense, again, hanging in there, forcing another third down. Moody is the running back. He gets the call. Great speed burst for the first down. Tier Green, the strong safety, and up on the stop. And Emmanuel Moody, one that got away from Matt Brown, a young guy that committed to Texas, then came out and visited USC. They say, they say this guy right here will be a superstar at the tailback position for SC. You bring in C.J. Gable and Emmanuel Moody. 
I said, how do you separate the two when it comes to physical ability? They said, C.J. Gable is kind of like a Cadillac Williams from Auburn. Emmanuel Moody would be the Reggie Bush. It's pretty good recruiting when you can bring in those caliber of players. Let's see if the Trojans can score on the last play of the opening quarter. John David's going to try. Touchdown, Jarrett. As the first quarter comes to an end, John David Booty, the junior from Shreveport, Louisiana, sticks it into the end zone and into the hands of his All-American weapon, who tonight has had a better first quarter than he had an entire game against Arkansas. Brent, that time he beat the junior college transfer Andre Jones, who again commented about when they beat USC. Danello tacks on the extra point. And Andre Jones, you are not at Fresno City Junior College anymore. And wow. And Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines, returns after this message and a word from our ABC station. So the Trojans settle down and move 83 yards in nine plays to 323 scoring on the last play of the opening quarter to lead it 7-3. Troy Van Blarkham drilling his second one this time out of the end zone. He'll come on to the 20. Well you can't see number 25 on this all 22 right here shot but I promise you USC's coaches saw number 25 Andre Jones and they go to a simple post route right there and it basically, Kirk, is just man-to-man -man coverage. And Andre Jones, looking back to the quarterback, never really played Dwayne Jarrett, never focused his eyes on him. Dwayne Jarrett set that move up perfectly. Not that Andre Jones was doing anything to stop him, but if he were, I think that was a great move there by a veteran receiver. Let's see how Nebraska responds. Draw play. Right off the top, the Trojans trying to strip the football. Not unlucky, the ball carrier. Well, Zach Taylor is going to have to try to get this offense together and get them to believe that they can sustain a drive. I really love Zach Taylor, guy that was sacked 38 times last year. He's a coach's son. His dad played at Oklahoma. He was a captain in Oklahoma, went on to coach at Kansas State. Guy's a, just a tough guy, a blue-collar guy. His teammates love him. He's got to rally these troops right now to get them to believe that they can come back. Keeping on the ground, lucky, short of the first down, that yellow line. And how about Marlon Lucky coming home? Grew up in North Hollywood, 10 minutes from the Coliseum. Was recruited by USC late, decided to go to Nebraska. You know, Nebraska with 20 players on their team from the state of California. This is a huge game from a recruiting standpoint sure. for the Cornhuskers. Kenny Wilson, the running back in third and short, and timeout. Zach Taylor wants to come over and talk about it. See him look at the plays of the, uh, in the wristband and say to the coaches, what was that? He'll find out during this timeout. 7-3 USC. Sunny Southern California, 7-3, Trojans lead it. Now, wouldn't Pete Carroll love to have Ronnie Lott <laughs> in his defensive backfield on this third and two? Nebraska's 0 for 4 on third down starting this game. Going to throw for it. Can't find an open receiver. And got it at the 40-yard line for the first down, number 83, the junior from Houston, Terrence Nunn. He's made their two biggest plays of the evening. That catch for their first third down conversion and that punt return earlier. Outstanding patience here by the quarterback, Zach Taylor. Defense started to come to him. But I think the great thing here is the fact that Terrence Nunn read his quarterback's eyes, came off of coverage, and got back into position where he can read the quarterback and say, hey, let's move it back to the inside. Good adjustment and a nice throw. Now they come with Wilson as the running back. Moala and Dallas Sartz in on the stop. 
Maiava was also there. They use about eight linebackers a game, and there's Kaluka Maiava. And, uh, and they've just got a ton of them when you look down there on the field. Mawaluga, Ken Norton, their coach. He was pretty good himself now, folks. Ken Norton Jr. was. Second down and 10. Drops it off. Lucky for the first down. I think you see one of the trademarks right there of the West Coast offense. First of all, he gets great protection, but then he goes to the little check down. Marvin Lucky sneaking out of the backfield. That's really a signature play in the West Coast offense. Quarterback doesn't take a sack. Signature play, but you need time to be able to look downfield that long and then to be able to check down. So that was a nice job by the Nebraska offensive line, giving Taylor enough time to find his check down. Well, Nick Holt, the defensive coordinator, under fire here on first and ten. Middle of his defense holds this time. And now it is time for our Aflac trivia question. And it concerns our defensive coordinator. He's the grandson of which Hollywood legend who once played Tarzan in the movies? We could not resist. Kirk. Nick Holt, who came back to join this coaching staff, was the Idaho head coach a year ago. There he is. I'm telling Kirk, stay out of this. <laughs> oh, yeah? Brent lit up. This is Brent's Aflac question well, it's right every week. He's all over it. This Just is wheelhouse. Don't don't I've learned that. You want the Aflac next week? You no, got it's it. all you. <laughs> Come up with some good ones. Toss play. Here's Kenny. Think as you watch this game, you see the question I have. Does Nebraska have enough firepower to get down the field and make a play? Interesting statistic over the last four years. USC with 16 offensive draft picks. As we look at Bill Callahan, Nebraska took one offensive draft pick in the NFL in the last well, that, four that's years. That's why people program. need to have patience with Bill Callahan. I mean, you inherit an option attack. It's not going to be personnel that's going to get to the NFL. He's now had three or four years to recruit players. That's why you're seeing a completely different looking player on the offensive side of the ball for Nebraska. Here's your third and seven, and uh, Carroll was showing pressure, and there's a timeout, I believe. And that's the second one used by Nebraska on this drive. So Nick Holt causing Bill Callahan some problems over there. And we talked about Nick Holt. Let's go back to that question. I heard you're going to enjoy this one. Grandson of which Hollywood legend who once played Tarzan in the movies was also a great athlete here at USC. And the answer is, you knew this, folks, Buster Crabb, who once played Tarzan, Flash Gordon, and Buck Rogers, graduated from USC, won a gold medal very close to here in swimming, and there he is. And here's what Nick told us. His grandma, Virginia, saw Buster as one of the lifeguards when she was on a tour boat in Hawaii. They met later one evening, and the rest, folks, is history. And there's the grandson right there of the great Buster Crabb. See? You've got that, and I've got Dancing with Stars. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, my friend. <laughs> Breaking down <laughs> Tarzan. 1932. Was that 32? 1932. Okay. Right here, Kirk. And then uh, in 36, remember, they went yeah. over to Germany. That's where we had the World Cup final. They came over here and copied the Los Angeles Coliseum, the, uh, the architects, before they built that stadium over in uh, Berlin, Germany. Of course, through the years, the Coliseum here in Los Angeles has been changed dramatically, and it hosted a second Olympics in 1984. Carl Lewis had a big, big showing there. Third down and seven. Going to run the toss play with Wilson's. Got speed, gets to the yellow line. Picks up a huge first down with Kevin Ellison in pursuit. Boy, third and long. This is a call that I'm sure Bill Callahan looked at on film and knew exactly what he wanted to get. He got the coverage that he wanted in the secondary, but a big block right there, just enough to catch the linebacker by Dane Todd, the fullback, sprung Kenny Wilson loose to pick up that first down. Good effort by the fullback. Kenny Wilson, Butler Community College, same junior college as Zach Taylor. 
10 to 100 meters in high school. Kenny Wilson. Marlon Lucky back in as the Nebraska running back. Got the first down carry. Another first down to the 21 yard line. So Nebraska having much more success on the ground. And we see a penalty flag, and this is against the Cornhuskers. This one's coming back. End up bringing this one back with the holding call, but it's just interesting. You think about West Coast offense and Bill Callahan and throwing the football over the place here early in this game. They're trying to establish the run. Holding, holding. on the offense, number 81. Ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. That's one of their tight ends, Josh Mueller. And guys, obviously the reason they're trying to do that is to slow down the pass rush. The more balanced you are, the more the defense has less of a chance to come in and attack your quarterback when he drops back to throw. You take a look at this. Keep in mind, Nebraska 107th out of 117 last year in rush offense. Come into this game ranked eighth in the nation in rushing offense. As a result, a first and 20. Here is Lucky and very conservative in that situation. They've thrown for only 26 yards so far here tonight. Lawrence Jackson with a stop. Let's get another update from Matt Weiner. Matt. Hi, Brendan. Here's a vote for the Pontiac game-changing performance of the day. Oregon's wild comeback to beat Oklahoma for the first time in school history. The Ducks scored 14 points in the final 72 seconds and blocked the potential game winner at the gun. You want to vote for your Pontiac game-changing performance? Just log on to ESPN.com. Keyword, Pontiac. And Matt, a dramatic ending there. Here, USC leads Nebraska 7-3, second and 20. Sack. Ball comes out. I believe they're going to bring it back. I believe the referee is whistling the return down. They're saying that he was sacked and the ball was down at about the 44-yard line. We're going to come all the way back to the referee. Lost 11 yards on that sack. Thomas Williams gets in on him and uh, take a listen. He was scooped up by Chris Barrett. Got himself a little exercise on the play. Great confusion that time by Pete Carroll bringing a blitz. Blitz, two linebackers breaking from the same side. Brent, you said Thomas Williams, 41, who made the play. I think Dallas Sartz had as much to do with setting that up by occupying the, the, the fullback. I agree. On third down now, they set a screen, deflected incomplete. So a promising drive comes up empty. Lawrence Jackson, number 96, the junior from Inglewood, California, who grew up with Dog and Duro of Nebraska, deflects this one this this offense of Nebraska had a chance they got all the way inside the th uh, inside the 40 yard line and a holding call slows the momentum and slows them down and as soon as you get behind schedule on down and distance against USC they're just too creative to put pressure on a quarterback when they know you have to throw Titchener punted again read back deep for the Trojans Waving everybody away. Not a particularly good punt. Down to the 29-yard line. So we'll take a break. And when we come back, we'll take another look at John David Booty, the Trojans' new quarterback star. The title defense began with a win and reminders how strong the Steeler defense is. Now the champs hit the road. Jacksonville rallied to beat Dallas in week one. Two playoff teams from 2005. Only one opens 2006-2-0. Steelers-Jaguars, 8.30 Eastern, on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Bob Davey, do you think that Pete Carroll will ever go back to the National Football League? I don't think so. And I'll tell you what, when you go out and watch them practice, 
it looks like he's still in the NFL. <laughs> You but got that, that right. Isn't it interesting, though, how you go around the country, different philosophies? Pete Carroll, open practices. You go out there, and there's a bunch of people, a bunch of Hollywood stars. You might even see Will Ferrell, Snoop Dogg at practice. There is no chance he's going back to the NFL. Total control of this scene at USC. First down and 10. And a first down throwing as he hits Chris McFoy for his second, the senior from Chino. McEwen, let me play devil's advocate. Suppose that the NFL eventually gets around to solving what might be their greatest problem, getting a franchise back in Los Angeles. Would he be interested then, Kirk? See, I, I don't think it's about trying to be competitive and, and win at the highest level. He's been there. He's done that. I think it's about having a chance to control this program, and I think he's happy. I think there's a lot to be said for being happy, and right now he's the happiest he's been in his entire coaching career. Play fake by John David Booty. Going, got Smith open. Oh, he overthrew him by a hair. That was six, folks. Written all over it. What happens with USC is they'll lull you to sleep. John David Booty is as accurate a quarterback as you're going to see, and he had an opportunity by rolling him. You notice they move him around a lot, and when you move him, it allows the receiver to give you a double move. That time, Steve Smith, just a little stop and go, and that hesitation was enough to get right by the Nebraska secondary. Bob, you're a former defensive coordinator and a good one. What are they doing back there in the secondary to help these corners? Well, first thing, Courtney Grixby, the corner, better retape his ankles. But you better get a safety over the top and help because there's no chance of covering one-on-one -on -one Nebraska's corners with these wide receivers of USC. Here's Moody. Gets the handoff. Great speed. Breaks out in the middle. Twist for the first down. Now, he is the closest to Reggie Bush. I don't want to say he's going to be the next Reggie Bush. Don't want to be misquoted. But the coaches will tell you that he has that extra gear. Well, they say that he has that, that ability to explode. I think he shows a little bit of power here, getting through a couple arm tackles and getting across the first down. You know, we, we've talked so much about the loss of Leinert, Reggie Bush, Landale White, but the offensive line, because of two players who left early, they're breaking in three, three new starters, and this group, by the time it's all said and done, could be just as good, if not better, than last year's offensive line. Washington, the eye back. Play fake, in trouble, sack. Great penetration that time by the defense, and they just rolled in. Of course, right as you talk about the offensive line being, being just as good, if not better, than last year, there's a little bit of a confusion there up front. Ryan Kalel, the, the center, who's as good as there is in the country, came down to help out on a double team, and allowed that defensive lineman to get right through for the sack. And and anytime was, you bring the linebacker, excuse me, Brent, on play action pass, it's tough to protect. That was in Dominican Sioux, number 93. Now they come back with a screen play. And Reed, who has been returning punts, is the running back. He saw a little action at I back against Arkansas. That shows you how deep this team is. Play that gets him in a position now to try to execute on third down. And I'm looking forward to seeing the development of John David Booty not only tonight, but throughout this whole night. I know Marcus Allen on the left and Ronnie Lott on the right looking over. Former All Americans, former greats in the NFL, always supporting their Trojans. Backfield's empty, third and 11. John David's going to put it up. Fire complete. And Jarrett, his fifth catch of the night, Octavian, the linebacker, hanging on. You almost get the feeling with Pete Carroll, this is four down territory because use two plays here to pick up the 10 yards. They picked up about seven, about eight yards to set up now fourth and two, and there's no hesitation. They're going for it. And what hurts Ryan Pudrell, the 255 pound fullback? Out of the game, obviously, with that injury early. 27 power quad was the famous fourth and two that was stopped by Texas, but they emptied the backfield. This will not be that play. They're going to throw for it. Smith's got it. 
So all of the options that Lane Kiffin dreams about that he might have called that night. And we have a penalty flag on this. That play has been second guessed over and over and over again when Lindale White went for it. Huff sold out for the Longhorn defense and the rest is history. The face mask so tack on to that game. First foul, face mask, 15 yards on the defense, number 25, first down. Another tough night, another tough play for Andre Jones. But they went empty backfield, fourth and two, good block downfield by Dale Thompson. Looks like an easy play, but it, it comes down to accuracy from John David Booty. And you can see Pete Carroll, that's a first down and he wants more. He saw that face mask. How about scheme though? Trying to defend USC with talented players in a great scheme. Empty no backs fourth on and two. fourth and two. Yep. Ball has to be right on the money. Booty put it right there. Washington's his running back. It's inside the 15. Fire and over through Joe. If you look at the yardage, USC with 174 yards on the night, Nebraska with 83. Well, Lane Kiffin and Steve Sarkeesian see the matchup they want in the red zone. Double move, move to the inside. The corner again, Andre Jones, the junior college transfer, holding on for dear life, got away with a grab of Jarrett's jersey. And they are, that's the matchup they're attacking when, once they get inside this 20-yard line. And the reason Andre Jones starting Zach Bowman, their talented corner, preseason All-American, hurt in training camp. First so, round. Yeah, you're right. Reads back in as the running back. And a timeout as the play clock was running down. So one timeout apiece left. We're going to take a break. USC leads at 7-3, and they're threatening again late in the second. We are back with Bob Davey, Kirk Herbstreet, Lisa Salters. I'm Brett Musburger, Saturday night in Los Angeles. And their favorite football team leads at 7-3, and they're threatening again. Second down and 10. There's a penalty flag. You see the linesman through it. Dead ball, false start, number 83 in the offense. Five yard penalty, second down. Fred Davis, the tight end, guilty there. And our Pacific Life game summary and uh, coach fairly one sided here. No question. And you get the feeling that the dam is about ready to break when you watch USC because they can throw the football really at will on the corners of Nebraska. Let's see if they try to pick on one of them again. Rolling to the right. Throws in underneath. And that play was well defended as Fred Davis, the tight end, with his first reception. And Stuart Bradley, the linebacker, is there. Fred Davis, a former wide receiver, who I thought they might try to get the football to a little bit earlier. Because he, he's, as a former receiver, he's grown into becoming a tight end. They feel that he could eventually be a first-round pick in the NFL. He has that kind of talent. has become a more physical player. When you take a look at the personnel, Kirk, defensively, Zachary Bowman gone for Nebraska, out for the season. Isaiah Fluellen, Courtney Grisby, 5'9", and Andre Jones popping off. You had to feel, though, that they were going to attack at the corners, and they're doing just that. Third down and 15. Fumble! Ola now. There's a penalty flag. There was no play prior to the snap. Delay game on the offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. <laughs> USC catching a little bit of a break there with the delay of game because Nebraska, going against the empty set from USC, decided to bring more than SC could handle. Coach, what do you make of the Trojan offense here so far? A little sluggish, a little bit out of sync. But playmakers, and even right here on third and forever, you think about the jump ball situation to number eight, Dwayne Jarrett, into the boundary. After giving time, Washington's a running back. 
Rush four. Steps up. Got it for a first down. Man, what a throw by John David to Jared. You called it, coach. Well, the most important position in football may be the quarterback, but the second most important, Brent, is cornerback. And if you don't have corners, there's not much you can do. Nebraska bringing their safeties up on third and long, leaving their corners on an island. Shanley on one side, Green on the other, walking up into the line of scrimmage, and then they didn't even blitz. And to leave Grigsby by himself against one of the best receivers in college football, critical mistake by Nebraska's defense. But do you see why they pay those cornerbacks so much in the NFL? Yeah. You have to have them. First and goal. And timeout, I believe, isn't that their last one? And again, I think it was the clock running down. So we'll take a break just inside of three minutes and the Trojans threatening to score their second touchdown of the night. We're back 7-3 and Kirk, uh, Coach Carroll's upset about what here? Well, he's upset because the play clock is getting started much quicker than I think he thinks it should be. He's pretty familiar with the surroundings here at the Coliseum and he's just talking to the officials saying, guys, give us a chance. It's the second time in the last four or five plays. My quarterback's trying to call a timeout because we're, we don't have enough time. Remember now, they're out of timeouts as they try to score with a first down inside the five-yard line. Going to throw for it. Got it. Touchdown, USC. That is Steve Smith, who's a fine route runner. John David Booty saying he probably runs the best routes of anybody on the team. When you've got a great route runner who's experienced and you have a young quarterback who they say is naturally just a very accurate thrower, you drop back to throw. That was a tight window, but he put it right in there after the nice move by Steve Smith. It doesn't look like it's only John David Booty's second start ever no. in major college football, no. does it? He looks very confident. Danello tacks on the extra point. Steve Smith has been around for a long time. He's familiar with the scheme. John David Booty in his fourth year. Look at the patient sitting in the pocket. It's an easy throw for him, but it's just nice to see in your second career start, putting it right where it has to be. That's a tight window, Coach. But you see the problem for Nebraska. If they only rush four, they can't get there. You either rush four and you can't get there and you give him time. Or you blitz, and then you leave your corners isolated one-on-one -on -one for the wide receivers. He just looks like a USC quarterback. I know he's from Louisiana. He had fun on game day this morning with Southern accent. Well, he, tells us how he, he tells us how he rides his bike every day. He lives off campus about two miles away, right. and he rides his bike over to campus. It's a long way from Shreveport, Louisiana <laughs> sure to is. L.A., isn't it? Very unusual story. Imagine leaving before your senior year in high school to come out to college. Theoretically, he was a backup to Matt Leinart in 2003 when he should have been a senior in high school. And the reason why he left is that his daddy was fired as a quarterback coach at that high school. And he felt very uncomfortable about staying there for his senior year. His father has now moved on over to another high school in Shreveport, John David Torres. And he's here tonight, by the way. And Nebraska has decided to bring it out of the end zone. And well short of the 20 yard line as Jackson doesn't make a good decision. And we remind you that Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Southwest Airlines. The low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at southwest.com. General Motors, a new level of quality, a new level of confidence. Aflac, ask about it at work. And Capital One, what's in your wallet? 90,000 plus, the Los Angeles Coliseum. The Trojans rolling. Notre Dame will fall in the polls. So who will be number two? You figure that Ohio State coming back to beat Cincinnati soundly in the second half will certainly be the number one team. And here is Zach Taylor handing off to Lucky Lucky through the middle to the 20. Let's check in now with John Saunders. John. 
Brennan, your Sports Center 30 at 30 update. Michigan again goes into Notre Dame and puts a whooping on them. Brady Quinn intercepted by Prescott Burgess here. One of three interceptions Quinn would throw on the day. Michigan wins easily. LSU and Auburn in a real tight one. Jamarcus Russell here is passed to Davis just short of the goal line, and Auburn wins. Brent. All right, John, and here it's second down and five. Nebraska trailing. Lucky won't get there. Brought down by Chris Barrett, who has been active. Coach uh, Bob Davey, you talked about Barrett. You said, man, man, just look at those calves. And the coach said, we call them cows, not calves. I mean, you're going to see the big fellow's legs down there. Maybe the biggest calves I've <laughs> ever seen. Number 91, Barrett. He is a huh? great-looking young player now. He's having a good night. They're down in two. the eye the toss play cut back by Wilson and if they give him forward progress he may have had it gonna be close there's the linesman looks like he's gonna give it to him doesn't it? they're gonna give him the first down and Bill Callahan sticking to his guns right now trying to run the football I mean, what do you make of that Kurt? I, I'm looking at the clock and I'm thinking and I, I know they're trying to hang in there to get to the second half but you're under a minute to go here. You got to get Zach Taylor, a guy who's very capable of throwing the football, and try to attack this defense. You want to pile on, Coach David? Well, he's thinking about those corners of his own for Nebraska. He doesn't want to see USC's <laughs> offense back on that field. <laughs> he just wants to keep it away from him right now. But 40 seconds, and that's exactly what he's doing. Here's Wilson. Bob, when you're really under fire on the corners, I think you think they should adjust the scheme and get the safeties back over to the side to help them out a little bit. The problem becomes when you have to take two to cover one, then you make yourself vulnerable against the run. And USC is so balanced on offense and so patient, they're able to run the ball against them. So it's, it's tough. The other thing they do is they get into a three and four wide receiver set. If you're going to pay too much attention to the guys on the outside, they'll hurt you with the vertical seams right down the middle of the field. 14-3. Nebraska struck first, if you joined us a little late, with a field goal. And then the Trojans responded with two touchdowns. John David Booty. Two more touchdown passes for 14 of 18. Let's go down with Coach Carroll. He's with Lisa Salters. Lisa. Thanks, Brent. Coach, uh, that last touchdown drive, third and 20 deep in their territory. D Dwayne Jarrett came up with a big reception. What was the key to that play? I think John David believing in Dwayne Jarrett. You know, he's a great football player. If we give him a chance, he'll make plays. John did that. Now, early on, you guys got off to a slow start. How was the team affected by that horrible injury to Ryan Paldrell, especially early on? Well, we'll be okay. You know, his ankle came back in, lined up a little bit, so we'll be okay, but it was pretty nasty. We'll be all right about it. All right. Thanks. Good luck in the second half. Brent. Lisa, thank you very much. So it's 14-3, and let us send it now to New York. We join John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. Take it away, John. The sun uh, setting on Malibu, and Nebraska hopes it's not setting on them also. 14-3 here at the half. USC scoring on two of its four possessions of the first half. You know, folks, when your punter has more yards passing than your quarterback and you're running the West Coast offense, you got big trouble. <laughs> Kirk, what is Nebraska going to do to shake loose here? Well, I, I think Bill Callahan came into this game calling plays to try to run the football to slow down Pete Carroll's defense. The problem is they're not attacking enough 
by throwing the football. And on the other side. And you look at USC's plan as we look at the playbook. Isolate the corners, in particular number 25, Andre Jones. Here they get him matched up on Dwayne Jarrett. Little skinny post route. That's stealing right now, Kirk. Well, whether it's whether it's Dwayne Jarrett getting a chance here against Andre Jones, that's that's like going against Air, or it's Steve Smith. The, the USC wide receivers, you get the feeling, are on the verge of some big plays when they get the one-on-one -on -one chance. USC with the first possession here in the second half, and here comes Harris. Well short of the 20-yard line. Good coverage by Nebraska. Our Pacific Life game summary from the first half looks this way, Kirk. Well, when, when you look at Zach Taylor, 4 of 8 himself, 26 yards passing. Of course, they had the, punt, the fake punt for 28 yards. That's not enough. I mean, if you came in to just compete with USC and just kind of hang around with USC and make it interesting, that's one thing. But players want to play to win. Yeah, you felt like at the end of the first half in particular, Bill Callahan coaching not to lose instead right. of coaching to win. Right. John David Booty with his family in. Washington's his running back. Mom and dad traveling from Louisiana. Incomplete, and that would have been a big score for Courtney Grixby. That play right there could have completely changed the complexion of the football game. We're talking a lot of negativity about Nebraska and why they're not able to have more points on the board down 14-3. Right there, if Grigsby gets his hands up and he secures the ball, he walks to the end zone, late throw in the flat, and I don't even think John David Booty saw Grigsby. When you're 5-9, you know you can hide a little bit. Hide the big baskets. And there's a... Uh, a lot of yellow. A lot of yellow. Dead ball, false start. Number 60 in the offense. Five yard penalty, second down. That's on the left guard, Radovich. And there is Pops John Booty. John David's father. And there's Josh over there. In the black jersey. Abram Booty in the middle, who's a great receiver for LSU, his other brother. So they've got amazing bloodlines in the B Booty family. Second down and 15. Deflected again. Really a sluggish looking USC offense to me compared to what they looked like in Fayetteville. Amazing how they went into Fayetteville, Arkansas two weeks ago, the first game in hostile territory. Had no illegal formations, no delay of games. Maybe the two week off. You know, this team hasn't played. They've only played one game, and that was two weeks ago, but they're sluggish right now. Third and 15. From the end zone, Booty on the move, fires and broken up again. And that time it was Andre Jones' best play of the night. It is fourth and 15, and look what we've got here. Well, let's a give fine a, stand. Let's give Andre Jones some love. We've been beating him up all night. This time he read it, got a great jump on the ball, and almost stepped in front of it for almost another interception here. Two of the three throws almost picked off for a touchdown going the other way. Yeah, you have to give Andre Jones credit for bouncing back. Boy, next punt, Terrence Nunn. Driven back to the 44, fumble. Nebraska pounces on the loose football, and that was close to being a violation, too. Again, no halo rule in college football anymore. As long as you give him the opportunity to catch it, I'm talking about the punt returner, he's fair game. Green saves the day. Yes, there is a Colosseum much older than this one. There is the stone that came all the way from the Roman Colosseum where the, the real gladiators come out in ancient times. This, of course, 1932, hosted the Olympics and again in 84. If you look down on the scene, made it a little more intimate through the years. First down and 10. Nebraska had 19 running plays and only nine passing plays in that first half. Fumble, and USC got it. Marlon Lucky turns it over. 
One of the problems when you alternate a lot of tailbacks in the football game is just the mechanics on the simple things between the quarterback and the tailback and just a self-inflicted mistake right there as Martin Lucky puts that football on the ground. Taylor put the ball in. Lucky just didn't have a chance to secure it. And an opportunistic USC defense pounces on it. Gives their, gives their offense great field position. Big Carroll high five and smiling. <laughs> He has Practice. fun, doesn't he? It's genuine. Running around, oh, throwing yeah. the football. Sure. He was thought he fun. was a backup quarterback the other day. <laughs> First down and ten. Play fake. Throw in underneath to Reed, the running back. And Reed has been used in third down situations. He's a good receiver. There is a flag. <laughs> Rough the passer on the defense, number 94. Illegal helmet contact. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Barry Cryer guilty, and we've had helmet to helmet for three straight weeks. This one, I think, is just a late hit. Referee standing right behind John David Booty, and as soon as he threw it, as soon as he threw it, Cryer unloaded on him, and that's where they're going to tag on the personal foul. And USC, I think, with a huge talent difference. Nebraska making it even worse right now by self-destructing here with well, they, the fumble and the hit. Well, they plus they missed two interceptions. It could have been returned for touchdowns. Then they fumbled the ball, and you don't want to give USC life. On the first down, short drop. Put it in the hands of Jarrett, who's inside the 10-yard line. Jones making the play defensively with Grixby. And you go back, Brent, you made the point about Pete Carroll high five and jumping around having fun go back to that question would he go back to the NFL I really think his personality is more suited there's for no college doubt. football there's no doubt he maybe he'll fool us and next year be in the NFL but you get every indication that he is happy at USC he's happy with the college lifestyle being around 18 to 22 year old men and he's just having fun genuine fun guy Washington searches for daylight this will bring up a third down. You know, when I say genuine, there's some guys that try to act like they're having fun. You know, boy, this isn't this great time, guys, but he, you guys saw him at practice. That's just how he is every day. I'll tell you one thing he's not having fun with. Agents competing for his talent. <laughs> no. That's why you talked about those open practices, how they let a lot of people in. I would not be surprised to see that tightened up a little bit in the near future. Third and three. Showing pressure. Firing against a touchdown, Jared. Dwayne Jarrett's second touchdown pass of the night. A catch, I should say, as Booty has thrown three. Two to Jarrett and one to Smith, and Pops enjoyed it. And that time they picked on fair. Courtney Grixby, the other corner. But go back to Martin Lucky. The fumble on the simple handoff provided tremendous field position. A deflating turn of events for the Cornhuskers. They bottle the Trojans up, save a fumbled punt, and then give it up. And John David Booty marches in his third touchdown pass of the evening. And his father, who came all the way from Louisiana, enjoys what he's watching here tonight. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. We are back, and there's Bob Davies' least favorite four-legged <laughs> animal. The opposing Traveler. coaches, they learn to hate. They learned to hate Traveler. And it's a beautiful animal. Well, Traveler's gotten in some great shape here in the last five, five years or so. A lot of running around the Coliseum. On the ground, for sure. Picked up by Green. And Green is out by the 30-yard line. 
The fumble set up the big play. Hand off to Taylor, puts into the arms of Bucky. He just didn't secure the ball. And I really think Nebraska, you see Grixby looking back at the quarterback, they'd be much better off coming up and pressing and jamming those wide receivers because when they play off and give them space, Kirk, they cannot handle the route running, particularly if Dwayne Jarrett. Come up and jam them a little bit at the line if you're going to play them. Anything to disrupt the timing. The athletic ability is just too great between the Nebraska corners going up against the USC receivers. There's a toss to Wilson. Slips the first tackle. And bangs his way. Across the 30-yard line. And Keith Rivers wearing that famous number 55 here. You just say a uh, number, a lot of awfully good linebackers through the years have worn number 55 here. Mark of distinction for a linebacker at SC. Second down and four. Off the draw play. This will be third down. Really, the, the foundation, when you talk to Pete Carroll, this USC team, it's all about the ball. Protecting the ball on offense, forcing turnovers on defense. They were number one in the nation last year in turnover margin. They, pre, they forced five turnovers against Arkansas, one tonight, and they've not turned the football over all season. They do a tremendous job forcing turnovers. Inside shuffle, got a first down out of it. Breaking free is Jackson. Nice call. Twenty-three yards. You're going to see the little shuffle pass. He gets a great block from the left guard, Greg Austin, right here. Right there in the hole on the linebacker, Malaluga. Excellent call right there against an up the field defense on third down. Finally a chance to see Brandon Jackson in the open field. You can really see a burst there from Jackson. Try him again. Got the feeling in this game in Nebraska early. I, I think was just trying to hang in there. No matter what it took on both sides of the ball, their goal was to get to halftime and still be within striking distance. And down 14 to three at halftime, I think they were thinking, now let's go out and win the second half. They had some opportunities, then of course had the turnover and gave up seven quick points. But they've got to be able to come away with something on this drive. Kenny Wilson now the running back. Tough run for a first down. Kenny Wilson, JC youngster, and Taylor Mays, the freshman who started at free safety. Perhaps the number one defensive back prospect in the nation signed with USC and forced in because of an injury to Josh Pinkert, who's been lost for the season. He is a big, rangy safety. When you see him in practice, you think, my goodness, they've got a linebacker back there. That's how big he is. 6'4. 225. Taylor Mays at safety tonight. First down and 10. Wilson. As you look down at our scene with Nebraska trying to finish one off, our aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear Tires featuring silent armor technology. 90,000 plus, folks. Saturday night in L.A. You know, there's some great stadiums around this country. Some are newer, some are flashier, Brent. But this one may have the most tradition right here. Got a lot of echoes around here. Wilson. This will leave them with a third down as Ray Mabaluga, number 58. Remember the name and the number, folks. First start tonight, only a sophomore. He's going to be a damn. Who would have thought we'd be midway through the third quarter? Zach Taylor would attempt nine passes on the, on the evening. Nine pass attempts for Zach Taylor. Bill Callahan determined to run the football with his offensive line. It's almost like he wants to run the clock down, Bob Davis. I'll tell you what, if they run some option, 
It's Tom Osborne calling the plays again. It's Frank Solich, Tom Osborne. Oh, hold on there. Mr. Osborne, now, he might have had a few points right now. <laughs> Third down and five. That's about to be messing with a Nebraska legend here. Oh, I noted that he lost his last election. How could that be? Jackson on the toss. Can't cut back. Brian Cushy, very active linebacker, along with number 58. And I understand Bill Callahan does not want this game to get away from him, but at some point, Kirk, there's just too much speed and athleticism on that defense. Give your guys a chance. I mean, you come in here with the West Coast offense, all, right. all the hype, maybe the best quarterback in the Big 12. Let them play a little well, bit. Third and five, if you're going to run, why get outside wide and allow the speed of USC's defense to chase you down. Now they're fourth and nine. You're left asking yourself which West Coast, Australia? Fourth down and nine. I got a timeout. Clock again was running down on him. So we'll take a break. 7.05 to go. And USC right now leading 21 to 3. This ESPN production available on ABC HD presented by Dish Network. Well, 7.05 to go in the third. You would think that if Nebraska's going to make a stand here, this fourth down is very, very important. Well, fourth and nine. We've been pretty critical. Wondering where the passing game, where the balance has been. Zach Taylor is an accurate thrower. Well, he's attempted again, only nine passes, fourth and nine. You got to throw now, but the problem is USC's is and Pete Carroll as good as it gets when they know you got to throw. Had a man over there. Curled at the corner and Malaluga. Broke on Purify. Nebraska gets what they want right here. They get man to man isolated coverage. Terrell Thomas and Nick Holt, the defensive coordinator, back from being the head coach at Idaho. Enjoyed that one. Now inside of seven minutes, and the Trojans up 21-3 here with a first down. Washington, in it running back. He's rushed for 27 yards tonight. And let's get an update from John Saunders in New York. John? Brett, it's the Taco Bell update in Tennessee. A big play here. Eric Inge to Jason Swain. Looks like he gets it in, but he's down in the two. They score three plays later. Up 17-7. Right. 17-7 in Tennessee. Better than the experts thought this year. I guess the improvement, eh, John, of, uh, of Ainge at quarterback has made a huge difference. David Cutcliffe has helped him so much with his confidence. Second and 10. Here's Booty firing and a great grab by Smith. What a wonderful catch by Steve Smith. And really a great job of coverage by Corey McKeon, the linebacker. But you said it. What a great adjustment right here by Steve Smith. Big time catch, Kirk. All I know is when Steve Smith made a catch against Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl in a national championship game, it's one of those, did he really just make that catch? After seeing that, Steve Smith's capable of making any catch you can imagine. Great hands and great route runner. Remember they had big Jarrett over on the other side. Four or five other talented receivers down the middle incomplete. Try to get Jarrett, who was uh, breaking into the middle that time. That's a great example of how Lane Kiffin and Steve Sarkeesian kind of co-offensive coordinators look for matchups moving people around that time they had an all-american wide receiver and Dwayne Jarrett matched up by himself with Andrew Shanley the, the free safety 
You get a safety on a wide receiver, you're going to take that matchup old, every time. Old quarterback getting a little excited up there about that matchup. Yeah. You started to foam with the mind I think a little Booty bit did too. He yeah. threw it into the end yeah. zone yeah. 50 <laughs> yards out. Washington brought down by McEwen. You know, it is easy to forget when you watch USC that except for one unbelievable performance by someone named Vince Young, we would be talking about perhaps the greatest dynasty in the history of college football as you watch this program under Pete Carroll put the show on the road after one season in which he was beaten by Utah in a Vegas Bowl over in Las Vegas that I did and folks that is the last time that this USC offense has been held to under 20 points tonight by going up over that it is the 54th consecutive game that they have put 20 plus points on the scoreboard that's an NCAA record the last time they didn't Utah beat them 10 6 Carson Palmer was the quarterback that day it was a tough tough defensive battle fourth down and five back is not from the five don't know why pretty good attack position for the D and a reminder now Saturday night football on ABC is presented by Southwest Airlines the low fare from here to there it's on Southwest Airlines at southwest.com Allstate are you in good hands Nike gridiron and infinity using the power of design to create dynamic beautiful vehicles and you know a lot of Nebraska fans came out here and Bill Callahan even said it this game a measuring stick for Nebraska I think it's a little too early Kirk to start measuring yourself against USC and the talent they have on this football team well, the, the skill level is at a different level he's still building this program up Wilson bangs straight ahead to the eight yard line and Kevin Ellison who's played with an injured knee he uh, watched practice most of the week but with the freshman at the other safety they needed a little experience in there and Ellison is held up my opinion on Nebraska they get out of this this game healthy they get out of this game where they're not embarrassed they've got Troy coming up they've got Iowa State coming up they've got Kansas coming up the goal is to win the Big 12 North and make it to the Big 12 championship game. That's the goal this year, realistically, for Nebraska. I can't believe that you would say that, but I know it's true. Kirk. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not falling. But folks, think about that for a minute. It, the goal for a Nebraska football team is to get out of a game and not be embarrassed. Think yep. about the history. Think about the tradition. Think about the days we've had with this football franchise through the year. Saying that. I still think Bill Callahan is a guy who can build this program and head in the right direction. But when you inherit an option attack, it takes four or five years to bring in the kind of personnel you need to run your attack. He still needs time. Third and two. Here's the toss. Nothing doing. Number 55 makes another play for the Trojans. Keith Rivers. And you can forget about running east and west sideways against this defense. That's the second time we've seen it tonight on shore yardage. And the speed of this USC defense. Keith Rivers, a guy from Orlando, Florida. Great closing speed right there. But Kirk, I don't like the call trying to go sideways again on third and yeah, Second time we've seen him try to get wide against the athleticism of, the, of USC. Titchener punting out of his end zone. Driving Reed back to the 41. Down to the 45 yard line. And a reminder, the season premiere of Grey's Anatomy, Thursday night at 9, 8 central. So make a move with TV's hottest doctors to a new season and a new night. So remember now, Grey's Anatomy moves to Thursday night here on ABC. Just one last thing about Nebraska as far as talent level. You know, Bill McCallan, and they've taken 18 junior college recruits over the last two years something they don't really want to do but he felt he had to do because of 
talent level in that program right now. A few times we've seen Jared drop. <laughs> We keep patting USC on the back about their offense. In fact, they lost so many players. We're almost through the third quarter. They have 235 yards of offense. They've not executed as well as you would think they would execute, at least as, as far as what I was concerned and what I thought I might see from John David Booty. This offense is not clicking. They're dropping some balls. They don't have the, the intensity that you'd expect to, to see from USC's offense. Right now, they, they're not happy, I'm sure, with the way they're executing on that side of the ball. Daniel Moody, toss. Cut off. Well defended that time. Let's go down below to Lisa. Well, Brent, just an update on USC fullback Ryan Paldrell. He was seen at halftime leaving the Coliseum with a half cast on that ankle. And I'm being told that he's been taken to a local hospital for x-rays. So that's the latest uh, from down here, Brent. Okay, Lisa. Thank you. It is third down and ten. Threw a little bit behind the receiver that time. Patrick Turner, who has blazing speed. If they could have cut him, caught him on the cut, he could go the 4-4. He could go to the house. And there's no question that USC, Kirk, getting back to your point, played much better the first game of the year in Fayetteville, Arkansas. That old adage about a team improves the most <laughs> between right. the first and second game, that's not holding true tonight for this USC it, offense. You know, and Nebraska's defense deserves some of the credit, but I, I think also just poor execution by USC. And this one is down at the 25 yard line and look who is on that punt team folks Ray Mabaluga. This is first starter linebacker and we can remind you now next week Saturday night football will feature two regional matchups. Most of you will see Notre Dame try to exact some revenge as they take on Michigan State. Remember they lost in a dramatic overtime in South Bend. Others will see this USC team go down to the desert to battle Arizona next Saturday at 8 Eastern 5 Pacific here on ABC college football lives here. Coming down to the final minute of the third quarter. And out of bounds at the 30 yard line. One of the questions that uh, is being considered by the AP voters coaches who will be number two with Notre Dame losing at home big time to the Wolverines of Michigan and have we underrated Michigan that was a fairly impressive defensive performance certainly in the first half that we watched uh, Kirk Michigan was on a mission today and they they were they were out to make a statement to the country and they did that. We'll see how Charlie Weiss and the Irish rebound next week when we go to East Lansing for that Michigan State battle. Taylor's receivers are covered and uh, incomplete. So here is what Kirk and Bob say at the moment. And of course, uh, Bob may have to change again. Number five. Go ahead. <laughs> You're exactly right. I wish we waited a little longer before we put, put that graphic up there. But I do think Ohio State's number one, USC number two. I really, really like Auburn sitting there at number three. I, I, Auburn played great defense today. I have Michigan all the way up to number three. I was really impressed with the determination after a 7-5 and five year last year. Michigan came out and made a statement. Now, can they maintain that hunger throughout the remaining weeks in, college, in the college football season? Third and six. Got the open receiver. And he put it in the hands of Brandon Jackson, who has shown us a little bit of zip here for a first down. The 32. Yeah, he's, seems like when he's got his hands on the ball, he's had a chance to get upfield. Really an excellent call again against the zone blitz. And anytime you blitz and play zone behind it, there's some open holes in there. Screen pass is a good play against that right there. Love to see Nebraska throw the football down the field vertically right here on first and ten. But well, he's back in the shotgun. Got it. You called it, coach. Put it into Nunn's hands. Get it downfield. 
See Terrence Nunn come in motion. USC in a three deep zone and just a crease down the middle of that football field. And a little life right now for the Huskers. Well, the first time we've seen them get aggressive on first and 10 and get the ball downfield. Protection was there and nice throw by Zach Taylor. Send in another play, Bob, will you? <laughs> I'm one for one. <laughs> I'm holding out right now. Come on. On the play action. Rolling to the right, throwing downfield, got an open man. Herring's first catch. Herring's inside the five-yard line. Matt Herring, who is one of those terrific stories, came back from a major broken leg injury, and they had to re-break it, reinsert the metal plate. That's 36 yards to the senior. And any time so you're going to run this kind of route where the outside receiver goes down the field and clears it out, the tight end runs the corner route, it takes a lot of time. And that time, a great job of protection from the Nebraska offensive line. And a nice job of rolling him away from some of that pressure. And Taylor showing a nice arm there to get the ball over Kerry Harris. Well, there's one quarter left. Can Nebraska come all the way back? We'll find out after this message in a word from our ABC stations. It's Saturday Night Football. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Nebraska first and goal to start the fourth quarter. And stuffed is Kenny Wilson. Zach Taylor had hit his last three passes for 67 yards. There's a tradition here at the Coliseum. The Olympic torch is lit for the fourth quarter of USC games as you pull back and see that great sight. This Nebraska team, one of the advantages they felt this season coming in, tight ends, particularly number 11, Matt Harrion. But they've got some tight ends that are capable of catching the football. Going to throw on second down. Can't find anybody open. And fumble! USC football. And there is a penalty flag at the five-yard line as Rivers comes up with the football. Ray Mawaluga jarred it loose. But a break for Nebraska. Nebraska catches a break, but they're tied in to the, to the, to the far side. J.B. Phillips, he needed to settle down in the end zone early. Zach Taylor wanted to get rid of the ball right now, but Phillips continued to run to the corner and ran himself right into a defender. Holding number 42 of the defense. Finley is from the previous spot, half the distance to the goal. Repeat second down. Dallas Sarks. Watch number 42 on the left side. He bought the, he bought the fake, and then coming back to save himself, he just tackles him. Terrence Dunn coming back the other way, and Dallas Sarks, who's a, a great leader for this USC defense, sat out all of last year after an injury early in the year. Just made the tackle there. Now Nebraska has the first down. Kenny Wilson is the eye back. Banging, banging, reaching across the goal line. No signal. Knee was probably down before the ball was extended and broke the plane. Let's take a look at the replay here. Brent, you keep talking about kind of the glory years of Nebraska football with Tom Osborne and how they, this is the, this, boy, he, he looks like he reached the ball across. It's a matter of if his knee touched the ground. To me, I think the knee was down right yeah, he's there down. prior to him reaching Maybe that ball Maybe even further across. back than where they spotted it, but it, this is Nebraska football. Big, strong offensive lineman. They're supposed to be able to pound it in there. Third and goal, banging again, and the Trojans hold. A goal line stand unfolding here. Moala, the nose man, was in the middle of it. No decision right here for Bill Callahan. 
you obviously have to, um, excuse me, you obviously have to go for it here on fourth down. And they will use a timeout with 12.53. When we come back, I'm going to ask Bob Davey if this gives the defense or the offense an advantage when you call timeout. the distance to the goal remember is not an automatic first down therefore this is fourth down for Nebraska Zach's gonna hoof it touchdown Nebraska he sold it Great call by Bill Callahan, getting an, an aggressive defense to commit down to the inside. Dallas Sarts comes in, the entire defense bites down, and they set that up on the play before by seeing how USC attacked and pinched in. That time they fake it into the inside, and Zach Taylor goes outside for the for, for the touchdown. The extra point by Congdon, and uh, hold on, we got a penalty flag. And we saw the West Coast offense on that drive, the big completion to Terrence Nunn, also the tight end, Matt Harrion. Illegal participation on the defense, too many men on the field. Backside here, they're backside here. Like... Yeah. JB Phillips, one of the tight ends, there was Zach. Greg Austin, number 65, left guard. Watch the big fella. Loses his headgear, and Zach Taylor takes it for six. John Saunders back in New York with a primetime pulse over on ESPN. Clemson and Florida State are all tied up right now. Joe Surratt with the touchdown and then their two-point conversion. The difference over on ESPN 2. AM and Army not at a 14 apiece. Bobby Ross getting it done there. Brent, back to you. All right, John, and here now it is 21-10 as Nebraska scores its first touchdown of the night. USC and Nebraska. Hard to believe, but they haven't met since 1970. Between them, these two schools have won 16 national championships and produced 10 Heisman Trophy winners. Here's Harris. Stone short of the 20-yard line in our Pacific Life game summary here from the Los Angeles Coliseum tonight. John David Booty, 179 yards and three scores. That one to Jarrett. But Zach Taylor on the old bootleg sold the fake and took it into the end zone. And Nebraska trying to mount a comeback. 12-30 left in the fourth quarter. See what John David Booty can do here to, to try to get this USC offense in sync. Washington cut off in the front seven. Bob David, would you agree that the front seven of this Nebraska team has played very well here tonight. No question the strength of this Nebraska team is that front seven, particularly those defensive ends, Adam Carricker, number 90, and Jay Moore, 44. Keep in mind, this Nebraska defense led the country in sacks last year with 50 and tackles for losses, primarily because of the pressure of that front four. They're big and strong up front. Causing John David to be a lot more trouble than he experienced against Arkansas. Second and nine. 
short of the first down. Smith, the receiver. And little Courtney Grixby with the cover. Courtney Grixby is a fine athlete. His problem, as you can well see, is that he's only 5'9". So when the big fellas get on him, and the ball's up in the air like Jared at 6'5", it is hard for him. But he has a ton of talent. I think USC needs to pick up the first down here. Start to go back to attacking the undersized corners of Nebraska. Washington for the first down. Keeping the clock running now at 21-10. I think this is what you'll see from Pete Carroll, even with an 11-point lead here in the fourth. Sure, they want to work the clock. They want to sustain a drive here. And one of the advantages they have is the quarterback throwing the football with the bigger receivers, more athletic receivers, if they can get them isolated in the matchups they want. I think they'll continue to do that, even with the 11-point lead, as they try to work clock. They love play action on these running downs, SC. Nebraska must have two scores. Meet the veteran Washington, who's back. Battling a little bit of a hamstring twinge. The last two drives for USC, they had five plays and a punt, three plays and a punt, find themselves now in a ball game. 21 to 10 and as I've said we've talked a lot about the potential of the USC offense with John David Booty but Pete Carroll not happy with, I'm sure with what he has seen so far with this SC offense this drive is very very, very important for the Trojans here's the freshman Grable a quick strike over to the side and muscling for the first down is Chris McCoy and the thing that you've all respected so much about USC, Kirk, is regardless of the situation, their confidence to stay aggressive with their play call calling and roll the ball in any situation. You saw that with Matt Leinart. I'm not sure they have quite the confidence right. just yet. They're a little more conservative right now, but the great thing about this offense, it's a quick strike. Any moment they can strike. He's one on one coverage on the outside. Yes, he does. And to go for it right now. He gave that little signal. If you. There's a flag down on it, however. We're going to get pass interference on Courtney Grixby, the corner. John David told us that his signal when he finds one on one and he's coming is that hang loose, that familiar sign that you've seen surfers use. Probably got it from Buster Craig. I was surprised he told us that. <laughs> I was too, but Particularly I now that you told all of America he, what well, the signal is. But he can change it up. He can use it. It's the indicator time. next week. Yeah, he can use an indicator. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? But he did go to it. He had a one on one opportunity, and it's, it's again a setup move by Steve Smith against the undersized corner. Grigsby has to lock up Smith, or Smith is going right by him. Yeah, Kirk, I think if you're going to play man to man, don't play off and give USC's receivers room to generate speed come up and press them and jam them. Arkansas had some success doing that. On the first down, play fake. And John David will take it out of bounds himself to the 39-yard line. That time, Nebraska fortunate that Stuart Bradley got penetration coming from his outside linebacker position because Play action fake, buying, trying to buy some time for Booty. He had McFoy breaking loose into the secondary, about 10, 15 yards behind every Nebraska defender. Bradley, good job pressuring and making Booty step up in the pocket and try to get some yardage. Emmanuel Moody, freshman from Texas, is the eye back. The call. Short. First down. And of course, the the one player who is missed the most by this team is clearly number five. They are searching as they have searched all night for one of these running backs to explode, like Reggie Bush would so frequently do. What, what you're saying, if you're the defensive coordinator, you'd re rather defend these five different yeah. running backs. And defend number five from last year, right? You think maybe? Yeah. 
<laughs> I was trying to make it easy for yeah. him. It is Washington. Got the first down. Yeah, talent like uh, Reggie Bush but doesn't come along very often, does it? You have to feel good for Chauncey Washington, though. What a great story. Came in in that same class with Bush and Lindell White. Twice had academic difficulties. Credit his dad, who is a USC fan, paid for his scholarship. He was not on scholarship through those academic problems, so he paid his own way. Here comes the end around. They're going to throw off of it. Incomplete and almost intercepted. Jarrett, the intended receiver, throwing it was Patrick Turner. It's always the danger with a little trickery here. You're going to put it into the hands of a receiver, Patrick Turner. Nebraska's defense not only sitting back there, but because the ball is thrown so high by the receiver, the entire secondary has time to get over there. I thought Shanley was going to call for a fair catch. He had plenty of time to get there. Not a pretty ball. Very, very fortunate for SC that was not intercepted. And SC always a great job of protecting the football, but that's really three opportunities tonight Nebraska's had for interception. In the second half alone. Second and ten, and here's Washington. Bounces off a tackle. Brought down from behind by Lance Brandenburg. Junior middle linebacker from Overland Park, Kansas. When you lose so many players, I don't care if it's Nebraska, USC, no matter who it is, and you get into a new season, you get into the huddle and you're not looking into the eyes of Matt Liner to Reggie Bush, you have moments that are very important to create a new identity and new leadership. This is one of those moments for Pete Carroll's offense with John David Booty. Up 21 to 10, needing a drive here to finish off Nebraska. Jarrett got him on a slant. Brixby's there. First down on that third down throw. And Nebraska bringing the linebackers. Even with leverage to the inside, Grigsby still cannot stop Dwayne Jarrett from getting there. The linebackers coming created a huge window to the middle and a good job by the offensive line of picking him up and giving giving Booty time to make the throw. And again, come up and play some bump and run. If you're Nebraska, don't let them, let them off the line of scrimmage unmolested, those big wide receivers. Back goes John David again. And has to drop it off to the safety foul that time. Gable, who had just checked in the game. Jarrett with a 100-yard night. Nine catches for 108 yards and two touchdowns for the All-America wide out. So he bounced back after the coach said, we didn't bring him all the way from New Jersey to gain only 35 yards as he did down in Arkansas. Interesting Pete Carroll's philosophy. You mentioned out-of-state recruits. They only go out of the state if they think a young guy has potential to someday be a first-round draft choice. They've gone to New Jersey quite a bit. Penalty flag thrown by the umpire indicating holding as that hole up and up for C.J. Gable on that play. Going to get Dale Thompson there, the tight end. So John David Booty tonight has thrown for 213 yards. The Trojans have rushed for another 77. They have averaged 5.2 yards a play. Holding on the offense, number 89. 10-yard penalties from the spot of the foul. Second down. The tight end at the top of the screen. Gets locked up here with Nebraska's linebacker. It looks, it looks oh, might, might have been Carriker, the defensive end, but he just locked on, grabbed his shoulders, and brought him down. Now, looking at John David Booty there, you could see his... In his eyes, he's kind of challenging his team a little bit and, and saying, I think he's feeling the moment, too. He realizes this is it's a big drive for him. Tailback, Washington. John David Booty steps up, tackles, gave him time, and hits the big fella again. 
out of bounds just shy of the first down, and Jarrett's big night continues. Lane Kiffin made the statement that raised some eyebrows this week that John David Booty's arm was stronger than Matt Leinert's. Kirk, I think you can see that right there. He threw that on a rope. Well, he, he definitely has a strong arm, but more importantly, the ball was thrown on time, perfectly to the outside, giving Jarrett a chance, and now third and short for USC. You know, I've heard a lot about that this week, about saying John David Booty's better than this about Liner, better in this area than Liner. I don't, I don't really agree with that kind of philosophy of pushing a guy once he leaves your program. Got the first down and the touchdown. John C. Washington, the junior from Torrance, who has experienced some problems, overcome them. <laughs> Have to love the balance of this USC offense. They can run it with power. Obviously, they can throw it. Total package, Kirk. And they finish off a drive there. Over six minutes, 14 plays, and 81 yards. We just said they needed that moment, that drive for this team without Matt Leiner, without Reggie Bush. And they got it right there. And USC will take an 18 point lead into this timeout. 6 27 remaining. Traveler making another touchdown circle around the Coliseum here is Chauncey Washington there number three what a moment his first career rushing touchdown and it's the Trojans up by 18 now with 627 to go. What a beautiful kickoff man when you've got a strong leg like that Ben Larkham and uh, our Allstate. Standings review looks like this. As I said, the Buckeyes will stay number one. Notre Dame, of course, falls. And uh, my fellows think USC is going to jump Auburn for number two. I think SC will be up at two. But I think a team that needs to come up, University of Michigan, needs to come way up after their performance today. Probably, probably the most impressive performance of the day, Michigan Wolverines. In South Bend. And I think of the Irish going into that snake pit called East Lansing next Saturday night. That will be a wild environment up there. On primetime ABC. And be really? a great scene next week. Yeah. Yeah. Is that where we're going? Yeah. yeah. Up there, pack them up and head to East Lansing. I never ask until we get done with the <laughs> <laughs> Totally focused, right? Clock operator, please reset the game clock to six minutes and 23 seconds. He's a character now. He's brought some energy to this program. There's something they call competition Tuesday. Every Tuesday, those players have to go out and earn their position when they're in full pads. They have about as competitive practice environment Kirk, as I've ever seen. I think that's how he prepares his young players, is they compete like no other program in the country Tuesdays and Wednesdays in practice and gets them ready for the game. Here's Wilson. Nothing there, and uh, let's get an update. Matt Weiner, what's going on? Time for a singular All-America Player of the Week update. Michigan's Mario Manningham all over the field in South Bend with career highs for receiving yards and touchdowns. He had three of them. Text vote to 87654 and your singular wireless phone to vote. Thank you, Matt. He is a big timer. Capital B, capital T. All the teams are going to have trouble with those wideouts with Preston on the other side for the Wolverines. Second down and eight. Zach has to drop it off the side. Can he get picked off now? Corey Harris for a moment. It looked like Kerry might grab it. You know, we were talking to Pete Carroll, and I told him SC to me now looks like a Southeastern Conference defense. You know, you picture those LSU Auburn teams with all that team speed. They have become that kind of team on defense with all the speed they've recruited. It's kind of been an evolution over the last couple of years, Kirk. And I think when you combine the speed and athletic ability with his schemes, I think 
It's a pretty sophisticated defense and it confuses the offense on a regular basis. They set the standard in college football usually year in and year out. Receivers covered so again drop and a drop pass by Brandon Jackson. There is a story that we haven't touched on Bob that uh, is kind of interesting regarding Nebraska. Next year you would figure that Sam Keller who transferred from Arizona State would probably wind up being the starting quarterback for Bill Callahan. Uh, he lost Harrison Beck who transferred out. I think somebody told me he went to one of the Carolina schools today. I can't remember. Uh, Kirk maybe you know but Sam Keller was in that battle with uh, Carpenter down in Tempe and he played the part of uh, John David Booty this week uh, ran the scout team. So we got a fair catch and uh, so we're going to take a break 518 to go 28 10 USC. Stay tuned Brent Kirk and Bob will break down separation Saturday on Saturday Night Football on ABC. Stay tuned for your late local news immediately following the game over most of these ABC stations. And then over on ESPN Sports Center, we'll have post game analysis along with all the scores and highlights uh, for the day. Analysis of Michigan pounding Notre Dame in South Bend. And how will the Irish come back next Saturday at Michigan State? And if you haven't seen the finish in Oregon, folks, you're going to want to catch that. And the Mets enjoying a fine season. Put together a good team and they keep it going in the playoffs. More on them as they go for the clinch out west out here in Los Angeles. San Diego and the Dodgers in a big weekend series out here. So we've got five minutes to go and uh, John David Booty throws it and caught. So Snoop queued it up. Fred Davis with a catch. And he wanted us to talk about separation Saturday. So there you have it. And uh, Bob, I know you are really surprised about Louisville. I am. And is that the first time you've ever taken a feed from Snoop Dogg in all the years you've done this? <laughs> I, I find that kind of interesting. That felt good. No, but I really did think Miami would go in and win that football game at Louisville. Hard to imagine Louisville could score 31 points, Kirk, on that Miami defense. Here's now a first down. Kirk, what surprised you the most on uh, separation uh, separation Saturday? Uh, probably Michigan's performance against Notre Dame. I expected Michigan to come out and play hard after going seven and five last year. But I don't know if anybody in the world, including Lloyd Carr, thought they would go in and dominate the way they did. So that was impressive. The most impressive thing that I saw today, Louisville taking the heart out of Miami after Miami was ready to fight literally in the pregame warmups, jumped out to an early lead, and then Louisville just came back to dominate that game. Larry Coker now is on the proverbial hot seat. At this point, you're going to start to see the internet blogs, the radio shows in my. Everybody's going to be talking about Butch Davis or Greg Schiano going to Miami to replace Larry Coker. I'll throw in a third name, Barry Alvarez. Okay, there's I'll a really third. Stir yeah. the pot hey, you're stirring. I, I, and whether that's deserved or not, or reality or not, it's going to become the reality with that fan base and with the media who cover the hurricane. Let me ask you this: Does Troy Smith now become? the leading candidate for the Heisman. Good I think, question. Greg. I think there's no doubt about that. I, I think uh, you could talk about Adrian Peterson, but his team lost today. You could talk about Brady Quinn. His team lost today, depending on how Chris Leak and the Florida Gators end up today. But Troy Smith at this point, without a doubt in my mind, is, is the man to beat for the Heisman Trophy. There's Dwayne Jarrett, if you were going to consider wide receivers with uh, what we have seen here tonight. He has put on some show. He's had two touchdown passes, 136 yards with 11 catches. So time running down here on Nebraska. They trail it by 18. First down and 10. Big handoff by John David. A lot of time, and there's a penalty flag. He was thrown into the line battle there by the umpire. 
So Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Southwest Airlines. The low fare from here to there. It's on Southwest Airlines at Southwest.com. Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. And Pacific Life for insurance, annuities, and investments. Choose Pacific Life. Power to help you succeed. Well, now, a uh, part of our coverage next Saturday night, those of you certainly in Los Angeles will watch these Trojans again. They'll go down and play Arizona, the Wildcats. And uh, I would dare say that Petey Carroll will be a heavy favorite on the road. Pac-10 conference play opens up next week, and it looks like the Trojans are certainly the class of the Pac-10. You've got to keep an eye on that Oregon bunch. That was a very, very fine comeback today against Oklahoma and they get Oregon here they get Arizona State here and they get Cal here and they get Notre Dame here so USC not only with a high uh, high ranking early in the year but a schedule without a conference championship that gives Pete Carroll even with all the losses still a realistic shot of getting back into the BCS national title picture SC with 11 draft picks off this football team from last year. Everybody said, how would they react at Arkansas? How would they react playing to an improved Nebraska team at home? No question, they've reacted very well. Wide open and going for it is Moody. Out of bounds inside the 25 and another penalty flag, however. Back by the line of scrimmage. Fun to see, though. There's a taste of what's to, what's to come for USC football. You're going to be seeing a lot of number 26 carrying the ball and potentially that that, uh, that that guy that needs to break one loose for a big play for this USC offense. They've had it for so many Holding years. On the offense, number 83. 10-yard penalty, previous spot, first down. Fred Davis, the tight end. Coaches like him as a blocker. Uh, we talked to them about Davis, and Pete said he's an outstanding blocker. But he's been too good of a blocker at that time. Tell you what, SC, three out of the last four years, number one in the nation in recruiting. And obviously that's the starting point, but they've kept all those guys in the program. You don't see guys leaving, transferring out. And that's a credit to Pete Carroll and also the competition and practice you mentioned. This is first in a bunch. Moody trying to get some back, stays inbounds, works on the clock and makes it very manageable. What a fine run. Now, reminder, those of you who are waiting for your late local news immediately after this game, over most of these ABC stations, except out here on the West Coast, of course, it's only 8.15, but then over on ESPN, they give you a full recap of the day and check in on uh, the Mets as they go for the clinch. We brought it back to uh, second and four after that 26-yard run in Emmanuel Moody. One the coaches really have a little feel for. I think you could see it on those last two carries. Banging hits Gable, the other freshman. Trying to reach across for the Goodyear blimp. Aerial coverage brought to you by Goodyear Tires featuring Silent Armor Technology. Trojan's got it. Now it's just a question of ending the game, 144. You talked about SC now going on the road to Arizona. We look down the rest of their schedule. Very legitimate shot of probably being favored in, if not every game, just about every game that they play. For Nebraska, back to the drawing board. They need to regroup and realize it's a non-conference game. There's still a lot to achieve for this year for Bill Callahan. I think they will be favored because of the yep. point you made. Their toughest games are here in the Coliseum. They take that turn. Conference play begins. They go on the road to Arizona, Washington State, Oregon State, Stanford. Only question would be UCLA out at the Rose Bowl. You might have to hold. I don't know what kind of a year. What are the well, Bruins going to do? Tommy Tuberville told me he played Washington State, and he told me this week he was really impressed with the athleticism of Washington State. And just because it's a game away from the Coliseum, that one stands out to me more so than, they'll go right through UCLA. UCLA, no problem for SC. Ooh, wow. No, no problem. Gable. So it'll be uh, third down at about five, and uh, 
Let's check in on our Chevrolet players of the game. So, Bill Bunnell, our uh, producer, gave us Corey McEwen, the fine middle linebacker, nine tackles, good going there. And uh, Derek Mobley gave us Dwayne Jarrett. He's our director. That's good picks down there in the truck, guys. That's well done. 11 catches for 136 yards and did a nice job by our entire crew. Our cameramen now who have uh, carried on for us and our technical directors and everybody just done a fine job again. Bringing down the clock now. Going to get out of here and be 2 and 0, oh, and that's Emmanuel Moody. But the player of the game would be wide receiver Dwayne Jarrett, the junior from New Brunswick, New Jersey. 6'5, 215. What I love is last week he got challenged by his position coach Lane Kiffin because he didn't compete against Arkansas, and he came back tonight to show early in this game he was ready to go. And you knew it was coming. Nebraska with injuries to Zach Bowman. Their, start, their best corner in training camp. That was the weakness of Nebraska's football team coming in. And he's straight ahead of Moody. The frightening thing for opponents of USC. USC comes in a little bit banged up. They had some injuries coming into this game, and they're young. They're only going to get better now. It's a big night for John David Booty, his first career start in the Coliseum. Gets this one behind him, can learn from some things tonight, and move forward. The Trojans win it. An 18-point margin, and quarterback's mom and dad here they flew in from Louisiana to watch this and the number four ranked Trojans and won't that vote be interesting between USC and Auburn Auburn with that tough win over LSU LSU challenging on the last play of the game was stopped inside the five yard line so the big question is who will the voters move to number two with Notre Dame toppling and meanwhile Pete Carroll and the Trojans get ready for Pac-10 play. They're the favorite to win it. And Carroll and the Trojans are taking dead aim at another title. Down we go to Lisa. And you were called out by your offensive coordinator earlier in the week for a subpar performance against Arkansas. What was the difference for you tonight? Um, you know, we just took heart to it, you know, as an individual group. And, um, you know, we just got got out here, you know, worked hard. We've been working hard all week in practice. And, you know, we just came to play today. But for you personally, that had to mean something. What did you try to do differently? Um, you know, I mean, I'm a competitor. You know, um, I just try to go out there every day and just compete. And, um, you know, when he said that, you know, I kind of took heart to it. So, you know, I um, had to get back on my A game, you know, come out here and perform well. What was the best part for you getting a chance to run around all these undersized DBs on the other side? Um, just going out there, working hard. Um, we, me and Booty been connecting all week. We've been working on our timing. And, you know, as you see today, you know, we hooked up a lot and, um, you know, things worked out. Thanks a lot. Congratulations, Brent. Thanks, Lisa. And again, our final score, USC 28, Nebraska 10. And a reminder, join us next week for Saturday Night Football on ABC. Most of you will see Notre Dame versus Michigan State. Others will see USC versus Arizona. All at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on ABC. So Dwayne Jarrett with a huge night. 11 catches, 136 yards, two touchdowns. For him, it was the thrill of it. Special presentation of ESPN College Football on ABC.